we're going to learn about how to get rid of brown diatom algae. I'm going to show you what it looks like before and after I've used my method to get rid of that algae overnight. You're also going to learn how to properly acclimate sensitive fish so that when introducing these fish, you don't cause any harm to them. It's a foolproof method that I use all the time, no fatalities. So watch the video so that you can learn about that process. Welcome ladies and gentlemen to another episode of Naquascape with me Nat. If you're new to the channel, subscribe, hit the notification bell to learn about how I do different setups of aquascapes and planted aquariums from beginner to advanced levels. Also see me do unboxings and reviews and trying and testing products to do with planted aquariums and aquascaping so that you can get your aquascape and aquarium off to a flying start. Okay, so if you guys are following me, I did say that, you know, pretty soon I wanna be adding fish to this aquascape here. However, I've been getting some really good suggestions on fish in the comments, but I've still not decided what fish to get. I was originally gonna add the green neons and the kitty tetras that were originally in there, but I'm not going to anymore. I think I've got an idea of what shrimp I'm gonna add, but please let me know in the comments what fish you would like me to add in this gate behind me here. Just drop a comment below, let me know what you think. So in order to get rid of this diatom algae, I'm gonna add some Amano shrimp and some Otosynclus catfish. I'm gonna show you what the tank looks like right now with the diatom algae and what the algae levels kind of looks like after a 16 hour period, after introducing the Otosynclus catfish, Otosynclus catfish and the Amano shrimp. So let's go and see where these fish are at the moment. All right, so here are the fish, the kitty tetras, the green neon. So the green neons, I am going to donate back to Horizon Aquatics UK. They got a beautiful display plant of um, a load of boosts on black lava rock, and it's filled with green neon tetras. So I'll add them to that scape. Not sure what to do with the kitty tetras. Where are they all gone? They're all gone hiding. <laughs> Typical when I'm trying to film, eh? But we are going to add some ottos to that tree stump scape because we've got no otters in there. Need more Amano shrimp in that 90 litre scape. Here is the tree stump aquascape guys. I'm really happy with how this is progressing. There are the there are the rams. I've got the rams just, where's my finger? There's the female, there's the male. So you can see the male just popping out there. There he goes, looking really good. So I've just got one male and there's the female as well. There's the female, oh, I just chased. The Harlequins are doing absolutely fantastic. They're just so healthy. Love the way these Harlequins, you know, kind of bring out the scape. Love these fish. Okay, so the main reason I want to add the Amanos and the Ottos is because you can see I've got all of this brown diatom algae, which has been there since the scape was kind of set up and getting mature. And, you know, the Glossostigma, so this is Glossostigma, grew quite tall. I've only just recently trimmed it as well but there's still this brown algae left over i'm not worried about this diatom algae um it's fine but my ottos and the new amanos will take care of that so i already have some amano shrimp just here i already have some amanos in the skate but i need more of a cleanup crew you can never have enough of a cleanup crew so in a recent video you know i swapped out all of the kind of long plants that i had because it just didn't look good and I swapped it out for this Starogyne Repens. And honestly, the S Repens is just growing really well already. So the substrate I'm using is made by Colombo. And these plants that I'm using are all made by Aquafleur. So that's a company. So Colombo and Aquafleur are companies under Aquadistry. So the CO2 system I'm using is made by Colombo. It's a home refillable system. I'll leave the videos on how to set it up and an update of what I think about that kind of CO2 system in these two cards here and here. This RAM, honestly, it's amazing. I've not kept these for ages, but they're doing so well in this scape. And there's the female just there, doing really good, really healthy, eating well. I wonder if they'll breed in here. We shall see. Oh yeah, I added some hag 
Hygrophilia pinnidifida from one of my scapes here. And there's another one just there. That one, I just left floating in that area and it's attached to the wood. So I'm really happy about that. That one I actually wedged in there and it is growing slowly but nicely. All right, so I put cling film or what you guys might call in the States shrink wrap on the top because these, these Harlequin Rasboras, they jump. Um, they've gotten more used to me coming into the fish room and you know, tinkering about, but you know, <laughs> in the beginning when they used to get startled and they were settling in, they jumped. But look at them, hey, they're just looking good, these Harlequin Rasboras. Don't you agree? Let me know in the comments if you love these fish. This hang on back filter made by um, Superfish, which comes with this aquascaping tank, so you can see the inlet just there, is doing a great job. But I just don't like having a heater in the, in the tank. You can just see it, and I, I, it's just bugging me, that's all. But it serves its purpose, and it serves its purpose really well. The heater's great, the filter's great. I just don't like having that look, that's all. And I don't like the look of it because I'm fussy. So a quick tip when I'm catching a Mono Shrimp or Otter Sinklets is keep the embroidered part of the net on the outside so they don't get stuck in here. So it's a bit more smoother on the inside and they don't get stuck. Little tip for you there. All right, so I've got them in there. It's time to drip acclimate them. So I need to set that up, but I've spotted something in the tank. So the Helianthium tunnel in green, you know, it's not looking too good. And the reason why it's overgrown, to overcome this issue, you need to just thin it out by pulling some of the Helianthium tunnel in green out of the soil. So just thin it out by pulling it out. Don't trim the Helianthium tunnel in green. It won't recover back that much. So just thin it out and you should be fine. Okay, so let me take you through the process of how I drip acclimate the Amano shrimp and any shrimp that I get from Microscapes. These are an absolute godsend. They're like little tap valves. Um, I've put a link in the description where you can get these from. I picked them up from Horizon Aquatics, but I bet Amazon sell them as well. I'll try and find an Amazon link if I can. Um, so yeah, well, focus on. So that's really good. It has a valve here so you can control the drip. And I have one on each end. And basically what I like about having this system, instead of, you know, tying on, basically tying a knot in here to control the flow of the drip. For drip acclimation, it's essential that you have one of these. These are little taps with a valve here that you can shut on and off and control the flow of the drip. The added value of having these is that one, you can control the flow of the drip, Two, you know, if you're relying on tying a knot to control the flow of the drip, you don't have some weight so that it stays in the jug. And this also stays in the jug where the shrimp are.
all right then guys so the otters and the mono shrimp have been acclimating for about i don't know just over an hour and it's time to release them so let's get these guys released shall we Look at these Amana shrimp getting straight to work on that brown algae. It'll be really interesting to see what this looks like tomorrow morning. In fact, you know what? That's what we'll do. This is what it looks like right now. It's approaching midnight. Let's come back tomorrow in the morning. Let's see what this looks like. Oh, look, there's the Otto. Otto's getting, getting to work on that brown algae. Oh no, he's on a leaf. He might get the brown algae. We'll see. So the thing you need to know about otto catfish is that you always have to add them to an established tank. You know what? This, this, that amano shrimp has been on that amano shrimp's back, even in the tank, even in the other tank. Yeah, so as I was saying, you know, you gotta have some algae for your otto catfish, you know? Make sure you add your ottos to an established tank just so that, you know, they don't you know starve really re you really need to see those round bellies on those ottos i can't express that enough um you want to make sure that you do have some algae or something that they can kind of graze off when you introduce them to your aquarium so that they feel comfortable yeah i'm just gonna hitchhike a ride take me f take, take me somewhere take me somewhere let's show me, show me around show me around i can't be bothered i'll just hitchhike a ride let me know in the comments if you know what's going on here. Is this breeding? I don't know. I don't have a clue. <laughs> let me know in the comments, guys. Also, let me know in the comments what you think to that ram. Alrighty, guys. So it's the next day. Um, and lights have come on. So I've just let the lights come on. Let these guys kind of just settle in, color up. And let's just have a look at the kind of diatom algae on the grosser stick. But now I think it has gone significantly less. There's still some there. But just remember, this is 16 hours. It's not even, you know, 24 hours. It's literally overnight. And I think a lot of the diatoms have been eaten. I mean, they're still, they're still going at it. Check you out, Amano. Hey, little Amano shrimp at work. Yeah, that's right. So, <laughs> yeah, they're doing good. They're doing good. So, if you have diatom blooms, stick a, stick a cleanup crew. I suggest Otto's and Amano shrimp, and they'll get rid of it. As for the fish, you know, they're looking really good. They're looking really healthy. All of the otters, you know, have nice, decent, full bellies. I've added the cleanup crew. Bit of an update on this tank. Um, hopefully in the video you've learned how to acclimate shrimp and any other kind of delicate fish that you need longer periods of acc uh, acclimation into your tank. And what to do if you've got diatom bloom and physically see, you know, how much of that diatom bloom has been reduced just by doing these steps of adding the cleanup crew overnight i tell you what that physidens moss just there is starting to you know grow now it's starting to settle in starting to grow especially where there's light areas but interesting to see what happens to the physidens moss in the darker areas but we shall see
as I said before, the Glossus Stigma carpet, you know, has just been trimmed. It was really long. That's why the under undergrowth is a bit yellow and stuff. But I'm just interested to see how this revives, how it grows with the fertilizers and the substrate system that I'm using and the CO2 system that I'm using in this scape. Let me know in the comments, guys, what you think about this scape. Do you like it? Don't you like it? Let me know in the comments. Okay, so that is the end of the video. I really hope you enjoyed today's content. If you got some value out of that, do me a favor, please smash that like button, subscribe, hit that notification bell so you don't miss out on these kind of vital videos that helps you with your planted aquarium and your aquascape so that you can really succeed in this hobby and enjoy your aquariums. So that is it for me today. Until next time, ta -ra.